Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode one of KSP Full Release, my KSP campaign. That's very exciting. Um, those people that may have caught my beta campaign uh, will know that I like to play a reasonably heavily modded campaign, and uh, I'll be talking about the mods as they come up, but the one you might notice right off the bat are those nice clouds that are appearing around Kerbin. Uh, that's from the Environmental Visual Enhancement mod uh, that adds those things amongst others and I'll be talking about later but that will make itself apparent as we progress through this particular video right away uh, and other mods that I have installed you know what I'll do I'll talk about them as they sort of make themselves apparent uh, you will find at the end of the video a full list of all the mods that are installed in case you want to check any of them out okay let's get started so we'll get rid of all this stuff now one of the mods I do want to talk about right away is Kerbal Construction Time because it pretty much impacts everything that I do and what it does is it adds a time component to all your builds so that things don't get built instantly. Now what they give you are these build points that you can put towards um, improving various things. So I'm going to put almost all of these into the vehicle assembly building. I'll put a couple towards the space plane hangar uh, because I do have some plans to do some things there, but almost everything I do at the beginning is going to be happen in the vehicle assembly building. And you'll get an idea how this works uh, very, very soon once I start to build my first vessel. Okay, so let's get started by picking a couple of contracts, launching our first mm -hmm. vessel. And, oh, gather scientific data from Kerbin. That sounds simple enough. Those look like a good first two. So we'll just enter into the vehicle assembly building. Okay, yeah, yeah, we got that. So let's get started here. Oh, I'm going to pick, this is a uh, homegrown rocketry. This is the spud capsule. Yeah, I like this. This is obviously uh, modeled after sort of the Russian vessels like the Vostok and uh, or their, their capsules. Very nice. It holds just one Kerbal. It's essentially the same thing as the Mark I uh, capsule, but uh, I don't know. I like it a lot better. And we'll stick uh, this little flea booster on the bottom of it. Oh, well, they don't they don't give us much to work with here, do they? Some aerodynamics. Oh, ooh, tail fins. Yeah, I could use those. New aerodynamic model. Yes, need tail fins to help this thing go straight. I think three of them should be good. Let's take a look at where the center of mass and the center of, whoops, not the thrust. I want the lift. Yes. You do want the center of drag or center of lift to be below the center of drag. I'm sort of playing around with seeing, you know, what, how things are going to move around as fuel uh, gets drained. Let's put the fuel back. Um, and the reason why you want that center drag behind the center of mass is so that this thing will act a little bit more like a dart. That's always the structure you want with a with a with a rocket. Is this sort of dart structure? Oh, we got goo canisters right off the bat. Well, that's a nice change. Collect us some science. I'll throw three goos on here. Uh, this is the little, uh, it's for Kerbal Engineer. You'll see that mod in a bit. It's something I'll talk about a lot throughout this series. Now let's go through the rest of these. Nothing, 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 nothing. <laughs> a whole lot of nothings. Okay. Oh, parachutes. Going to need some parachutes. I'll go with the stock parachute, but I will start talking about real chutes, which is the one that's on the right. Uh, but that'll talk about that in a later episode. Otherwise, this is looking like a pretty decent little vessel. We got some warnings down there. It's saying that I don't have a parachute. I certainly do have a parachute. I got some unused monopropellant. I certainly do. Thanks for the reminder. Let's take that out of there and shed some mass. Don't need that monopropellant in the capsule. Saying that I got to think about life support, but there's days of life support in here. That's not going to be a problem. Okay, and now the one thing you do want to do is you want to control your thrust to weight ratio. Uh, back before there was atmospheric heating, this wasn't as big a deal, but now it certainly is. And I like to get it for small vessels in around 1.7, and for as the vessels get larger, I like it to get closer to around 1.6, 1 1.5. 1 so this guy, I'll set the thrust to weight ratio to 1.7. That should give me some good. Because then I think I'm ready to give this thing a test. So. What Kerbal Construction Time allows me to do is to simulate a launch. And it costs some money. You can see it costs 29 curb bucks here. And that's going to give me 15 minutes in the simulator. 
Now, as we move on, we were able to extend that time. And as you move into other spheres of influence, you can do simulations around other objects as well. But uh, for now, just 15 minutes. And this is our test to see this is working, because I'm going to play this without any reverts. So if I kill somebody, well, I kill somebody. So I want to do this simulation, make sure this thing works the way it is intended to work. Noticing Jebediah there doesn't quite look like Jebediah. <laughs> I have to get into the textures, get Jebediah looking right. Okay, so we'll launch here. We seem to be going up at a very, very sane pace. I like this. We'll angle it because I want to land in the water. Not quite sure what this thing would be like with just a single parachute if I landed it on land. So I think landing in the water would be a good idea. So we'll just keep angling it. See how it goes. And the one thing about a simulation is, like, this ended up going perfectly fine, so I am actually going to leave the simulation and get right to building this thing for real. So I'm happy with that simulation, so what I do now is I hit the launch button, and then instead of hitting simulate, I hit build. But the thing to notice is it's not being built right away. What's happening instead is it goes into what's called a building queue. Okay, so let's check out our building queue. So we open up Kerbal Construction Time, hit the VAB, and you can see here it's going to take 10 days for us to build this particular vessel. Okay, but it gives us this nice warp to complete button. So we can do that, watching the clouds and the sun and the moon and the stars going by. So here we are now 10 days later. And the other thing I got to do is roll it out to the launch pad. So that's going to take just 20 minutes, 21 minutes. So that's not so bad. So we roll it out to the launch pad. And I can see now it's going to be dark. And of course, I could launch in the dark. But this being a video, that's not too exciting for you guys. So I'm going to take advantage of, let's close this warning that came up, this warp to next morning button that uh, has been added to KSP. That's great. All right, so now we're ready to go. So we're going to hit launch, and I don't want to go with Jeb. I want to start with our newest Valentina. Yes, our newest Kerbal, the newest edition that's just come in. Yes, Valentina is going to be our first official pilot. Now, with the solid rocket booster, of course, thrust doesn't matter, so uh, I'm just going to turn the thrust off. We'll observe a goo here at the launch pad. I want to get as much science as we can out of this now that this is for real. We'll do a crew report. There we go, keep that. And then Valentina is going to go out and do an EVA. So one of the sort of tricks to keep in mind is that you can take the data from the capsule and then insert it, store it back in the capsule. Now I'm also going to do an EVA report, and we'll store that into the capsule as well. There we go, store the experiments. And then we'll go back in, hitting B. I've got to get used to that, hitting B to board instead of F. That's a new thing. But what we've done now is we've freed that slot uh, for taking another crew report. So as soon as we launch here, do another crew report. Now I'll use the science alert to help me do the crew report. So the reason I was able to do that is because um, yeah, I can do another mystery goo as well. There we go. So that's the science alert mod up there at the top right. It's kind of nice. You don't have to right click on the parts all the time. And again, we'll aim ourselves towards the right so we end up going over the water. Oh, just broke a speed record of 150 meters per second. And we've run out of fuel. Of course, with the solid rocket, you know, uh, I had no ability to turn that off. So this thing was just going to do what it's going to do. And I am fully in lawn dart mode here now. I really don't have much control over this vessel at all. It's just going to come down. But I'm just waiting for it to, uh, yeah, there goes the parachutes. That should help flip it around, get it to land engine first. Oh, I've traveled five kilometers. Doesn't feel like I've traveled that far. You can still see the Kerbal Space Center very clearly. And 
And there goes our parachutes, and we'll orient ourselves now the right way. See, a lot of messages have come up here on the right. What do we got here? That's the, di and then we completed the contract to launch a vehicle, of course, so that, that's cool. And, oh, yeah, that's our 150 meter per second speed record and our five kilometer distance record. Close those off. Well done, Valentina. And what do we got here? According to Kerbal Engineer, 80 meters from the surface. 50, 40. I'm going to try to angle the capsule so that it'll fall with the hatch up so that she'll be able to get out when this is all done. Splash down. All right. Okay, now we can do our third mystery goo observation from the water. Um, I can't do a crew report yet because I have to get the crew report that's stored in there out. So we'll do an EVA report while we're out here. And then we'll take the data that's stored in the capsule and then store it back into the capsule, freeing up that final crew report slot. Go back in, take a crew report. Excellent. EVA. And there's one more to do. When you're hanging on, you get EVA flying over the surface. But if we let go and stand here, even though I don't have to go in the water, I'm now going to take an EVA from the water. Whoa, I kind of fell into that texture there. There we go. Take EVA from the water. And now she has officially fallen into the water. Uh, let's see if I can get myself back into the capsule. I can recover each of these separately, but it always, I don't know, it kind of bugs me to not get them back inside. I keep saying I need to do an EVA report, but I've done an EVA report. I think science alerts just can, oh, I saw the F for grabbing. Let's try that again. Yeah, got it. All right. And then B to board. And we're there, so all that's left to do is recover the vessel. That's pretty much everything we're going to be able to collect. And there we go. We got ourselves 35.6 science, having now a total of 45 science. So that's great. Of course, we recover our parts. So our vessel, we get almost $6,000 in funds back, and Valentina gets an experience point. So let's go spend our science. I do like how these nodes are grayed out now. The grayed out nodes, so you can see what's coming up. That's fantastic, and you can see what parts are coming up so that you can sort of, you know, you get a little bit more information to help you decide which nodes to unlock. But here, I don't know, there's not a lot to choose from, really. I, like, I, I basically have to unlock both of these. So Engineering 101 is going to get unlocked. And then basic rocketry is going to get unlocked. Yeah, it still leaves me 35.6 science, so I can do all right. I got to pick, I can get two of these three here. I'm sort of looking ahead, and always towards the bottom, there's more of these sciencey type parts. So here I have some control parts. I, I, I definitely want to get those. And then uh, the electric parts and the thermometer. Why do I have two thermometers? Oh, and the ScanSat altimeter is here, too. I'll talk about ScanSat later on. Dish antenna. So I think survivability is definitely one I'll have to go for. And stability, yeah. I think I'll go for that. Stability and survivability. Now, with every node that you unlock, you earn more building points that you can put towards upgrades. So I got four new building points here to spend. And uh, I want to take a look at, ooh, I got KS. Okay, I want to take a look at how long it's going to take to research this, because that takes time now too. And I can see, oh wow, those bigger ones, stability is going to take 35 days. So I'm definitely going to take some of these points and put it towards research and development. So let's see, one point gets me researching an extra science point per day. One more point, now I'm to two more sciences per day. So that brings stability. Now it's like, yeah, I'll have all that unlocked in seven days, so that's worthwhile. And let's see, what, what do we have coming up for contracts? That'll help me decide what to do next. Uh -huh. 
Escape the Atmosphere and, and Orbit Kerbin are the only two, so I guess not much in the way of choices. So I'll grab those two. So that's VAB stuff, so I'll most certainly put those points Yeah, that's VAB stuff, so I'll certainly put those points into the VAB. So an extra one, there we go. So that'll get me building stuff more faster, and now it's time to look into the VAB. Now, um, it's going to take a few days to research even the first of those nodes, so I thought what would be a good thing to do is maybe just launch this vessel once again, since the, I'm not building anything, so I might as well just launch it again and see if that helps. And I thought maybe I'd try, I don't know, landing over somewhere else, maybe towards the grasslands or something like that. So, uh, again, I wanted to run it in simulation mode because I had no idea what this thing would be like landing on the shore. So here I am in simulation mode, or not landing on the shore, landing on the ground. So here I'm in simulation mode, coming towards the ground, just about to touch down. Ooh. Well, uh, <laughs> you know what? I don't think I will do that. I think I think the gain. There's no contract to get me out that way. I think the gains won't outweigh the cost of losing the better part of the of the vessel. So I got a better idea for what to do while my tech nodes are being researched. So here it is. Very simple idea. I'm simply going to put the capsule out there on the launch pad. That's all I'm going to do. We'll just build this, and checking our building queue, it's only going to take, well, it's only going to take three hours. So we've got 51 minutes to recondition the launch pad, and then it's just going to take an extra little more than two hours to, uh, to put that capsule out there. And the reason why it's taking such a short period of time compared to the 10 days it took to originally build that first craft is because I'm reusing the capsule. As you reuse parts, the time it takes to build those vessels comes down. So uh, this is a nice thing for me to do right now. I haven't unlocked any new tech. So uh, yeah, this should work pretty well. And we'll use that warp to sunrise once again. I do really like this feature. Okay, so we'll roll out our capsule. That's only going to take six minutes. And then we'll launch, and we don't need a pilot, so I think what I'll do is I'll put Bob in there. Because this, this isn't going anywhere, it's just a single capsule. And all Bob is going to do is collect some science from in around the launch pad. So it'll just collect a little bit of science. But the nice thing about this is that this mission is completely for free, because once I hit recover, I'll get the full cost of this capsule back, since it's sitting right on the launch pad. The further, you know, and then uh, because the further away you are from the launch pad or from the runway, the more cost uh, you incur when you recover things. So this is going to be a zero cost mission. So we'll, we'll do a uh, EVA report from the launch pad and then in, we'll store that. I might as well not do a crew report because I know I've already done a crew report from the launch pad. And then we'll just run out to the crawlway. And then from the crawlway, we'll take another EVA report. And uh, I, I think that's good enough. I, I, I'm, uh, I'll be going around the KSC later again to collect more, thi more things, and I don't want to run all over the place. It's just going to take too much time. There's only so much patience I have for this thing. So just the two EVA reports, I think that should be enough. And as Bob makes his way over to check out this little bunker, I think I'll draw this episode to a close. I hope to see you next time.